Good morning and welcome. We are doing UHB 3. And in UHB 3, we were looking at the last module and we were on lecture 24. So we were discussing the science or how to fulfill the human goal. If we look at, you know, what we had said from the beginning, we have been saying that our need is continuity of happiness. For this continuity of happiness, we have to look towards the activity of the self, that is right understanding, right feeling and right thought. This was termed, uh, with this you know, clarity that this is what is required. Now this is what, when we say seeing the reality the way it is, directly observing, that is right understanding. When we, on the basis of what we see, the design of the existence, seeing the coexistence, the unit submerged in space, on that basis, we can work out what is the human goal. And that is what we refer to as the science or the wisdom. And with this identification of the human goal, now how to go about this, how to actually work out the processes, how to go about fulfilling this goal, that is what we termed science. And in that science, we said there is science of behavior, science of work, science of participation in the larger order. Behavior, when we say science of behavior, it has to do with our interaction with people, when we interact with others in human-human relationships, that is referred to as behavior. So how to go about doing it in a fulfilling manner? When we talk about our interaction with nature, human being with the rest of nature, that is referred to as work, working with nature. Again, science would be about how to ensured that this is mutually enriching, mutually fulfilling. So we said there is science of behavior, science of work, and science of participation. Participation has to do with when we are participating in a larger system, in the societal system. We talked very briefly about the five dimensions. And we have discussed all this in the introductory UHV workshop, so we're not going into more detail here. But essentially, we were discussing yesterday about science of behavior. So when we are interacting with other human beings, are we doing justice in our relationships? Justice in the relationship means, are we only looking for our happiness or are we thinking about mutual happiness in our relationships? So now you can connect up what we did in the introductory workshop in terms of harmony in family. Because there, your basic interaction with other human beings starts from within the family. And then you move outside, you expand this limits of the family. And in your interactions with each and every human being, we need to see, are we doing justice in the relationship? Are we looking for mutual happiness, mutual fulfillment or not? So for that, if we look at the feelings in relationship that we talked of already, we spoke of nine feelings where it begins with trust. So the trust is the foundation value because at least you are having an acceptance that there is a relationship. Until and unless you have an acceptance that there is a relationship with the other human being, how will you move forward? So that is why it was termed the foundation value. And then there were all the other values and acceptance as your acceptance grows for more and more individuals, 
initially you may have feeling of affection for some people in your family immediate family but we are not able to see the relatedness with others outside slowly as we are able to see our relatedness with more and more we have an acceptance for that relationship and so we have this eventually this feeling of love being related to all in fact not just human beings but every unit in existence so this includes everything in nature so that is termed the complete value now if you look at you know the picture when you have already seen the coexistence you have already seen the unit submerged in space then it is very simple because now you see it all you know it all and on that basis of seeing the coexistence now you can ensure the right feeling very easily within yourself isn't it that acceptance is already there of being related to all because you can see how the relationship is already there if we have not reached to realization then we start with the thought process you know we get some proposals we observe we try to reflect we try to uh, refer to the natural acceptance and slowly we start moving up from the thought to the contemplation trying to see the relationship and so we may fall back but then many times we are also able to see it like many of you have shared so we keep doing that and we have to keep moving up till we are able to see our relatedness with each and every unit that is the feeling of love the complete value so yesterday uh, we had spoken about a task or a assignment for self reflection that when you are talking of science of behavior what will be your priority in terms of understanding feelings and physical facility so we are talking of science of behavior what would be the priority understanding feeling or physical facility anybody would like to go with that um give your suggestion on this we can take it now namaste vidhi namaste namaste sabhiko uh, vidhi the friends the priority should be understanding feelings and then physical facility yeah right because even though we are talking of the science of behavior human human interaction justice in the relationship until and unless we understand the relationship we may not have an acceptance for it so therefore we need to first of all have this understanding right you very rightly said thank you so the other things that we had asked in this assignment yesterday that we had asked you to reflect on was what is the role of physical facility in this science of behavior so would you like to comment on that what is the role yes, of physical facility yes we do ji the role physical facility which as it is a facility it facilitates the process mm -hmm. but uh, not always mm -hmm. sometimes if you are comfortable this is what i feel or other would be and maybe different if you are comfortable you are sitting in a good condition room and someone is angry and he comes and it may not affect you that much mm -hmm. but if you are also disturbed because of the physical facility and if the other is also disturbed then the other things may not get the priority so yes it it has some role to play for the other things but uh, not that much 
if we have the right understanding and physical see for for me it is required but if there are people who are not at all bothered about the physical facility then then the right understanding and feelings may not be affected by the physical facility okay yes, it is yeah. it's important because certain times suppose i want to study and uh, i no, we are not the... asking whether physical facility is important question yeah. is what kind of role does physical facility have when it comes to this doing justice in the relationship yeah i think it facilitates the process so that is what i am saying that if i am sitting comfortably and the other is not comfortable the chances are there that i may help the other to be comfortable no no so we are not talking about the other's comfort i mean it is about ensuring my feeling no so supposing i am uncomfortable inside but i am no, not talking about in, inside discomfort we are talking about physical discomfort i know but in behavior in our doing justice in the behavior interaction with the other in the human human okay. relationship then it has no role yeah that's what yeah it has no role yeah because if you see like this there is tension say between husband and wife no there is some misunderstanding some confusion um some doubt on intention somebody is angry with the other person with the spouse and so on now if the spouse gives a gift a physical gift physical facility to compensate does it compensate no no it will not compensate <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't compensate yeah, it doesn't compensate you might feel very excited seeing something new some gift and all okay very nice but then soon after that that issue that was there <laughs> is still there isn't it yes yes after some time it will come up again yeah then it has no role yeah the facilities are not playing any role yeah so we said yes three things are important understanding relationship and physical facility in that priority but when it comes to fulfilling human human relationship we might be able to see this that the physical facility doesn't really play any role you know that same gift if somebody is giving with not the right feeling and here you can take this we don't want it isn't it yeah thank you namaste didi namaste everybody namaste mm, uh, regarding physical facility the knowledge mm -hmm. of we is very helpful in a crisis period suppose for example uh, when there is a abnormal situation the commodities are not available essential commodities mm -hmm. and uh, people take uh, purchase more and hold it for themselves mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. others don't mm -hmm. so in that case our knowledge uhb can be properly utilized so yes. that it can be it can be really distributed within others yeah uh, thank you yes. yeah thank you so yeah it is very true that you know until and unless i i can identify my need how much i actually require i may want to keep accumulating more and more because somewhere at the back of my mind there is this thought that if i have more physical facility i'll be happy yeah. but i am not able to see that my happiness is because of my feeling within true yeah Yes, thank you so much. Um, there are also a couple more hands raised, but I think um, what I'd like to say is, just if we can reflect on whether we are doing justice in all our relationships or not. We don't need to answer that question, but this is an important question that we need to reflect on. 
are we doing justice in all our relationships that means relationship with not just our family members but other people people who are working for us people in our homes people with whom we interact on a daily basis people with whom we have um you know some service we are taking for exchange um of money or whatever it may be or anybody even somebody on the street so in our relationships are we doing justice in our relationships that means at least the minimum we can do is to have the right feeling and show the feeling from my side so this we can reflect on but we'll go forward now because we need to cover some content also and so if we see when i don't have the right understanding then i am not able to see the significance i am not able to see the relationship with the other human being so i may have i may not have the right feeling within me isn't it and i may be looking for happiness from the other the other should be nice to me the other should talk to me nicely the other should not shout at me all this i am expecting from the other but if i have the right understanding then i can have my feeling in line with this understanding the right feeling that is what we say right feeling means feeling in line with natural acceptance and you'll see that we have natural acceptance for feeling of relationship so with that feeling of relationship with that right feeling i feel happy and when i have the right understanding this feeling can be definite it can be continuous and it can be unconditional unconditional meaning regardless of what the other is doing i am able to see my relationship with the other and i am able to ensure the right feeling within myself even if the other is shouting screaming misbehaving whatever it is i can see that his intention is as pure as mine and it is only lack of competence or a lack of understanding that is the reason for the others misbehavior so this is the difference this is a state where i am not at all dependent for my happiness on the other within myself ensuring the right feeling i am happy this is not to say that i don't have concern for the other when i say i am not dependent on the other for my happiness certainly i have no the right feeling within me i can be happy but at the same time i have concern for the other also not that i am ignoring the other so that is important to keep in mind so this state where i am not dependent on the other for my happiness but i am ensuring the right feeling within me this is a stage of state of what we call svatantrata um you know there are if you see swatantra independent or having freedom or whatever they don't really um give the right meaning a better meaning would be something like self organized so i am within myself self organized i can see that this is how you know i am already related with the other but on the other hand if i am looking for the right feeling from the other so if the other is talking to me nicely i feel happy if the other shouts or screams or gets angry then i am unhappy and i may shout back also there i don't have the right understanding and i am depending on the other for my feeling so if the other is 
in the mood to give me the right feeling then i am happy if the other is not giving me the right feeling i become unhappy so what is this this is enslavement it's like i am totally dependent on the other my happiness is not in my control this is in hindi it's called patantrata so in relationship of paramount importance is right understanding with that right understanding of everything in the existence the way it is we can have the right feeling within us when we have the right feeling there is harmony within within the self because the feeling is in line with the natural acceptance so this harmony is happiness within now when we go to interact with other human beings with this happiness within then it can lead to mutual happiness because now with this feeling of happiness you know having this harmony within the right feeling in line with the natural acceptance with that my thought will be of how to perhaps express this to the other and all the way down to the you know um expressing the feeling from my side evaluating the other trying to see whether the other is able to see this feeling or not all of that evaluation everything so now we are in, involving all the lower activities of the self and then in the expression outside in the behavior we are trying to see for mutual happiness so there the focus is on concern for the other happiness for the other i am already ensured with my feeling and when we here there is a just a um, you know we're talking about love and trust love we say is the complete value because it is a completeness in the feelings if you see all those other feelings it is only some part but if you see when you talk of love it is an acceptance for all those feelings so it is the complete value and when we have the feeling of love then all these other feelings as and when required we will use them we will express them so basically if i see my relatedness with each and every unit then all these other feelings are only uh, small bits in that whenever i need to i will use a particular feeling like say i have a feeling of reverence for somebody who has achieved excellence so that is only taking care of my feeling for those who have excellence but there also there is an acceptance of the excellence so ultimately you will see that my relatedness with all that is that complete value because that encompasses all these other feelings and if we look at trust we said trust is the foundation value because that is the when we are saying trust we say we have acceptance for being related to that other person so at least that is the minimum if i don't have an acceptance for the other at all then there is no question of trust then how can we proceed forward with any of the other feelings so whether it be somebody known to me within my family whether it be somebody outside whether it be a stranger if i can see that the others intention or natural acceptance is similar to mine then i will be able to have the feeling of trust within me and this is significant trust we say we need to have trust for all 
because everybody's natural acceptance is similar to mine. So if I can see my natural acceptance, then I should be able to see the natural acceptance of the other also and be able to have this feeling of love, uh, feeling of trust. Yeah. So if there is any immediate question regarding this, what we covered today, we'll take the question. Um, if it is a sharing, we'll hold. Yeah, good morning, Didi. Good, good morning, morning to you. Yeah, Didi, it was pertaining to that physical facility you were just asking. Right? It was, I say, I was about to reflect that it is only helping the body of mine and the body of the other. That's what that was. Yeah. Didi, nice. Thank you, Didi. Good, good day. Thank you. So, um, with this, we come to the end of this lecture and we'll move on to the next lecture, lecture 25. So, we can see that we were talking about all encompassing resolution and we just spoke about the science of behavior, our interaction with other human beings. Now we will look at the science of work and the science of participation in the larger order. Yeah. We are already familiar with this. Science is about how to go about fulfilling the goal. And here we are going to work about, talk about work with the rest of nature and participating in the systems in the larger order. So this also we spoke of that ultimately it starts with understanding. With that understanding, having the wisdom of the clarity of what my goal is as a human being, that becomes definite. With that, how to go about fulfilling that goal, that is at the level of the B2 blog, the thought, that is science. And then in our behavior and work outside, it is an expression of that. If we see in the understanding part, Understanding is seeing the reality the way it is and being able to see the existence in the form of coexistence, in the form of units submerged in space. And when I do that, I may be able to see that in the nature, there is already an underlying harmony. Every unit is already self-organized and it is also participating in the larger order. And with this participation also, things are all in harmony. This is how the pattern in existence is. So if I can see that, then it becomes clear how I can take guidance from there. That I can also be in coexistence. I can also be self-organized. I can also participate in the larger order in a similar fashion, just be with it. So when we look at relationship, relatedness, so we talked of mutual fulfillment, isn't it? When it is human-human relationship, we call it behavior. And we want to be fulfilled. I want to be fulfilled, the other also wants to be fulfilled. And that is possible through working for mutual happiness, like we discussed. When it comes to our interaction with nature, what is called work, there also there is need for mutual fulfillment. So I look for my prosperity, but at the same time, I will work for the prosperity in nature also, enriching the nature also. So this inspiration I can take from the understanding of the existence, the way it is. Then we said science is the same thing in fact. So we said science of behavior is there, science of work is there, science of participation is there. We've discussed the behavior. Now we are going to look at work and participation. In the case of work, we are going to talk about mutual enrichment in this relationship that we have with nature. So while we are working for prosperity in the human beings, also taking care of preservation of the rest of the nature. And it, when, when it comes to participation, 
participating in the societal systems in the five dimensions that we spoke of so that we can fulfill this human goal from the small family order all the way up to the world family so if you see the science of work we said two things we have to take care of one is prosperity in the human being and the other is preservation of nature now if you look at prosperity in the human being prosperity for ourselves first and foremost thing for prosperity would be i should be able to identify how much is required how much of physical facility is required because if i don't see how much is required how do i know when to stop no otherwise how do i know how much i need to work for isn't it so first and foremost thing that would be required is identifying how much physical facility is required that can only come with the understanding of myself understanding of the body seeing the coexistence or at least being you know having it as information about the coexistence having this clarity that the self can only be fulfilled from within the self the physical facility can only be you know something that is useful for the body so with that identification of required physical facility next thing that is important for prosperity is producing that physical facility by way of labor so when i work with nature that is labor then some physical facility is produced so this production having this mindset that yes i need to do work make effort with the nature so that this can physical facility can be produced and when i am working with the rest of nature i will also be able to ensure that i am using such processes which are enriching for nature so cyclic and mutually enriching processes so rather than using harsh chemicals pesticides fertilizers which can damage not only the plant but also the soil and also the water contaminate all of this and in fact lead to you know problems for the human body also because we consume things that are grown in that so with all of that making sure that i use cyclic and mutually enriching processes and i should also be able to ensure justice for the people involved in the process so supposing i have a farm and i am growing many vegetables and i employ somebody to pick the vegetables because there aren't enough people in the home to pick you know at the time of harvest so i employ somebody am i doing justice for those people isn't it so anybody that human human interaction even if it is you know we called it separately as a science of behavior that is to understand but here also when we are working with nature whoever we come across in terms of human beings of course we need to ensure justice in our behavior with them so that is also included in this then right utilization this is a very significant point because if i look at see even for ourselves if we see how many things we have in the home that are already there but we may not be rightly using them they may be just lying there but we are not using them actively or rightly using them so then it will lead to our feeling you know that we think that okay this is this is old i can't use it or something like that i say my chair is broken suppose many times what happens is people say okay this is broken 
leave this, we'll get another. So you buy another. What do we do with that old one? Do we give it to somebody who can use it, repair it, use it? We could have done that, isn't it? We could have repaired it, used it, varnished it. It can become like new at a fraction of the cost. But this is how, you know, if we, if we don't see all this, the right utilization of the things that we already have, then the need seems to be far more than it actually is. So then I feel, no, no, I, now I have to buy so many chairs, now this will cost so much, now where is the money? I, so I don't feel prosperous. So, I mean, this was just an example, but we can see within our own homes, our clothes, our shoes, our furniture, the books we have, the, you know, other things, curtains, things like that. Whatever we have, are we rightly utilizing it or not? And exchange and storage for mutual fulfillment. So when we produce something, one is store it properly. If we don't store it and it gets spoiled, again, where is the prosperity? You feel like everything got damaged. So the rains are there. I ensure that, you know, I protect the grain or whatever I have in terms of physical facility from getting spoiled. And when I exchange it with the other, then also keeping in view this mutual fulfillment. So say a farmer is growing something. Now a lot of effort has gone into that growing and they have had to have, they will also have so many costs. Like we just spoke of, you know, having farm hands do the harvesting and so on. Now when I am trying to purchase this from a farmer. I give some money and in exchange I take this. Am I looking at mutual fulfillment or am I trying to give a quantity, you know, the least amount of money and get the maximum? So all this, you know, if I am feeling prosperous, then I will see that, you know, I already have enough. I will give the rightful amount to that person without trying to take more than required or take more than the fair share. So all this is included in my feeling of prosperity. Only if I am prosperous will I be able to identify how much I need for this prosperity to be there, I should have this mindset of working with nature and using the right processes because there I am seeing my relatedness with nature also. I also ensure justice for other people who are involved and whatever physical facility I get from this process of working with nature, rightly, I utilize it rightly. And when I am talking of exchange and storage, I am looking at the mutual fulfillment. When I am exchanging, mutual fulfillment for the other also. When I am storing, making sure that there is, uh, again, this would mean when I store properly, then I can rightly utilize also. But if it's already damaged, where is the question of right utilization? So all these points would be included in when we have to think about prosperity, working with nature. When we talk of preservation of nature, then there are three things, enrichment, protection, and right utilization. Enriching the nature. So if I'm, you know, like if you see the pattern in existence, how it is, 
when the leaves fall to the ground they enrich the soil it acts as manure similarly when i work with nature am i looking for that am i looking to enrich the nature or am i just doing something without understanding all these processes protecting the nature so we have now you know some systems no forest protection so that conservation of the forest and so on that need has come to make it into a system of preservation because we were not able to see the significance so there was poaching there was so many things happening na yeah? um cutting down forests and so on so protecting it and then rightly utilizing whatever there is in nature all these will be involved so if you look at the five dimensions that we spoke of now we are focusing on production and work because we are talking of work so when we say work what does it mean the labor that we do on the rest of nature that is termed work working with nature the labor that we are doing as a human being on the rest of nature what is production when we are doing this work with the rest of nature whatever physical facility we get out of this work is the production if we look at the production now one important question is what to produce so how would you decide what to produce so important thing is to be able to see that i should produce whatever is required for nurturing protecting and rightly utilizing the body because physical facility is going to be useful for the body so therefore it makes sense that i produce that which is going to nurture protect and rightly utilize the body you would think that this is an obvious thing but it is not so clear not so obvious today if you see so much of um cultivation or land may be used may perhaps is being used or is being used i should say for um you know keeping say animals and ultimately slaughtering those animals for human consumption now we can see that this is neither nurturing for the body nor it is useful it is also um not friendly with nature you can see that you know for the animals also this is something that is you are taking uh the animal has a will to live and you are taking away that life without um, or you know considering this will to live and besides all that is used you know how much of land is required for maintaining these animals how much of grain and you know grass and so many things that you grow is being used for these animals and ultimately you slaughter and you get a small amount of physical facility now you call it when it becomes say meat or something for consumption so and then it's not nurturing for the body either but then when we don't have the understanding when we don't have this clarity of what to produce then we can go into all these things today there is single cropping so if we are growing corn we are growing you know fields and fields and fields of corn again this is not a uh, nature friendly method because in nature if you have different varieties growing together they support one another so you have nitrogen fixers and you have others 
so like that you have many plants that can grow very well together but when you do single cropping you lose all these advantages so always you know what to produce that clarity has to be there and how to go about producing of course it has to be in a mutually enriching cyclic manner that we discussed something that is eco friendly and also ensuring justice for those human beings who are involved in the process so people friendly and eco friendly both are significant now when we say mutually enriching cyclic processes if you look in nature you see things are already like this things are cyclic and in the pro in that process every unit is being enriched this is already going on in nature we don't have to make it we just have to see it understand it and then live according to it so like we discussed earlier also plants for their growth they take up things which are already say in the soil they take up water they take up air and they grow when they grow and they mature and then there is a season change or when they die these leaves start falling on the ground and these further enrich the soil so you can see how the process is already going on it is cyclic it is mutually enriching and this is not just with plants and soil this is there in each and every other order like we we saw this in uh, the introductory workshop also so just as you know this enrichment cyclic process is there between the soil and the plants it is also there between the plants and the animals and you find that all of these other orders are enriching for human beings it is just that we are lacking this understanding so we need to you know see this and live by it yeah any immediate question you can raise your hand otherwise we'll keep going forward so this is all um, i think we have been through this so this should all be quite familiar to everybody so we said that science of work has to do with working with the rest of nature so that there is mutual prosperity this means mutual prosperity means prosperity in the human being which includes all of these that we talked of identifying how much we need first of all producing by way of labor using cyclic mutually enriching processes rightly utilizing what we have and then proper exchange and storage all of these points are important for the prosperity in the human being and when we come to preservation of nature enriching protecting and rightly utilizing the nature so science has to science of work has to do with all of these today if we see we are not seeing in that but even if we look at the physical world are we really taking care of all this today yes there is a hand raised yes ma'am uh, it is in relation to the prosperity the uh, mm -hmm. one two production by way of labor uh, i am not very clear about it yeah so see for me to be prosperous what do i need that feeling of having more than enough yeah you know physical facility where do i get the physical facility from eventually where is it coming from in it's society being, well where is society getting it from if you see it is, somebody is producing it no yeah so ultimately that production has to happen if the production doesn't happen mm. supposing we don't have mindset of labor we don't want to do work with nature too much effort why to do and we don't produce if everybody thinks this way 
and the production drops there yes. is the prosperity isn't it yes. so production is a very important part of it in fact if you see um lot of places like in punjab for instance it used to be that you know that used to provide the grain and the you know um so much of the food for the rest of the country because the land was very fertile the water was good and all of that but now things seem to have changed for the worse one is you know the young people now they don't have this mindset of work producing by way of labor so they would rather do management kind of roles but not do the actual work with nature and to some extent i would say our educational system is also to blame because we don't talk about this isn't it everybody wants a white collar job nobody wants to do this work so this is creating a problem the other thing is because we don't understand these cyclic processes and all we want very quick maximizing profit so we quickly want jaldi jaldi we want more profit more profit so we try all kinds of things pesticides this that but in the process we are harming ourselves eventually isn't it yes again no prosperity so like that you will see it is all interlinked yeah yeah in our mm-hmm. educational system also you the the dignity of labor is not there yes people hesitate to work educated people mostly yeah because we you know we when we yeah. send them to school you have to sit on desk and chair if you look at our traditional village system you sit on the ground no you use say cow dung was used to um uh, sort of do the uh, coating on the you know, inside of the say the cottage so it used to keep the place cool now all this we don't want to get our hands dirty with cow dung you ask any child today i don't want to touch it no yes that mindset is changed girls will put nail polish then they don't want to touch all that these are real instances that we have heard no people in the village who are put into educational systems with free education the elders in the village were quite upset because they said now you have ruined our children they neither belong there nor they belong in the village because they don't want to do any more work in the yes. village so all this is significant it is important to think about na no? okay yeah so i think we are almost out of time unless somebody has a very quick question we may have to stop here um we'll reflect on this what we yeah. have discussed so far and i'll put an assignment in the group also